Hey there, it's John Barry 555 and welcome to my review of the 6th episode of Star Wars Lando. The episode being called The Eye. So, of course we obviously get to see the eye on a dolly. That was the main point of the episode, right? It was beautiful. Okay, done. Review done. I'm done. Okay, not really. Really, this episode is about the heist that they performed during The Eye. You guys probably figured that out, obviously. But, yeah. This, they steal the Imperial most and the most a good portion of the imperial payroll. How much of a total is hard to say. Um, but they they stole. Let's see. They gave out. I believe eighty eight thousand. Something like what they actually managed to get away with. Don't know how much purchasing power that is. Sounds like it's a a fair amount if if all that. But yeah. But yeah. So. We get to see them sneak in, undercover, all of that. And of course, as expected, characters die. Okay, I don't know why I said it that way, but that's true. Characters did die. We were expecting this. Now, I didn't expect so many to die. The fact is, other people who went on the heist, only three came out alive. Obviously, Cassian, I mean Clem, <laughs> came out alive. Oh, uh, you know. He obviously came out alive. I mean, it would have been a great shock if he was the one that didn't make it. I mean, talk about a twist, but that would be one awesome twist. Especially because I'd be interesting. So how are they going to get around that? You know, because of Rogue One and all that. Um, but yeah, um, Val, Val um, and the other, other lady, I forget her name, but they also survived. It's basically... Um, the Imperial Lieutenant who's siding with the Rebels, um, Dawn is his name, I believe. He dies, um, um, the other, the, uh, one of them, um, I forget all their names, which doesn't really help. But basically, all, basically, everyone who, ex nearly everyone died except for Cassian, and then, and Vera and the other lady. They were the only ones who survived. Which, yeah. It makes sense. It sounds like Dawn, like he was willing to die. You know, he during the heist, he tells the commander basically, when the commander says that he'll hang for this, Dawn basically says, after seven years here and what I've done, yeah, I deserve it. So that very much tells you he's not proud of his imperial service. But we also learned that one of the other rebels there is a former stormtrooper. The first time I think we've gotten a mention of a stormtrooper at all in the show. No appearances, just his first mention. Because all the Imperials in here are Imperial Army. We, I don't think we've seen... The closest to seeing a Stormtrooper is the TIE pilots that we saw in this episode. So, I do find that interesting, but it does make sense. Um, we were... The Empire maybe is a bit more complacent. They're using Stormtroopers more in high-value situations. So, potentially, we might start seeing... Actually, we know from the trailers we'll eventually see Stormtroopers, but we'll probably see them coming up because the Rebels are becoming more increasingly a threat. So that means maybe some Valor Imperial Army Troopers are, are transferred to Stormtrooper and given Stormtrooper training and all that. Or maybe it's, you no know, the pressures of combat against the Rebels requires more Stormtroopers and more Army Troopers getting converted to Stormtroopers, which could explain why Stormtroopers end up becoming more ineffective because they're not trained properly. I mean, um, authoritarian regimes, the, they survive off of control of the military, and, you know, and if you feel like you need more shock troopers to inspire fear, what are you going to do? You're going to create more shock troopers, even if they're not properly trained. So I do kind of like how they're, they're showing that right now the rebels are facing army troopers. They're not facing any storm troopers yet. So I'd be interested to see in how do they compare. Will we also maybe see them get less skilled over time? I mean, it, it's some interesting thoughts that this episode made me think of. But yeah, and then as expected, the young rebel, whose name I forget, but who's writing the manifesto, he doesn't make it. He at least gets off the planet, but he doesn't make it. He gets crushed um, by the payroll, essentially. But like, all of us knew he was not going to make it. It was just... Something we were expecting, I think. None of us, but he, but um, Cassian does take his manifesto after Veil vale gave it to him after the, he died. But I figured that was going to happen. Several people I know figured that out too, just as a prediction, which does make sense. If this show is about Cassian becoming a rebel, essentially, I mean, the birth of the rebel alliance, 
him taking this manifesto is him like, okay, I will take it, I'll give it a read, that kind of thing. Because it sounds like he's definitely interested in fighting the Empire, but he's not like committed to the rebel cause yet, which is kind of interesting. And then we have the other rebel who, he actually survived the heist, Cassian kills him. Yeah, basically with some, so this is what makes me think that Cassian's not fully invested in the cause yet, but he's aligned to the cause because when the, the other rebel, the one who, who I believe was a former prisoner, um, based off of the conversation with Cassie in the previous episode, if I'm getting my context clues correct, um, he basically says to Cassie, hey, how about um, we just take the freight and split it 50-50, 44,000 each, something like that. And Cassie shoots him, and then, but then he goes and demands Vale to give him his cut, and he'll take the... He'll keep, leave the freighter for her, and he'll take um, the doctor's ship because they need to go. To do- they went to a doctor to try to save the young rebel. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. But it does make me kind of surprised. Um, so that show not surprised, but fascinating, interesting, um, as this is showing that Cassian, you know, he wants what he got in for. You know, he wants what he thinks he is now old or do. You know, he was going to promise this amount. He wants to get that amount back, and. He's like, I'll take only what I'm supposed to take, and you get to have everything else. And he also gives a kyber crystal that Lucian gave him um, two episodes ago to veil to give to Lucian. Which I think is um, very interesting. Not interesting, similar to what I was predicting, but not quite. Because I remember I had predicted that Cassian won't get anything, but he'll still give the crystal back. Not quite what happened here, but it sounds very much like... He gave the crystal back, which is showing that or he's standing by his word, that he's somebody that Lucifer will probably reach out to again for when he needs something done. That's everything what's going to happen. You know, he's showing that m- maybe he's not fully invested yet, as I said earlier, but that he's becoming invested, that he's, he's interested, you know, for lack of a better term. He's interested, and with the right pushing and right motivation, he'll be fully committed, which we do see by the time of Rogue One. We also get a little bit of a shot of Mar Monson and Lucian up on Coruscant. Mar Monson is doing a speech in the Senate, trying to push some legislation. But you can tell the Senate's empty. There's there's some a few senators are in there are are, are distracted. They're not paying attention. So yeah, makes me wonder. Why don't you just call? I bet the Imperial Senate has some rules about a quorum being required to conduct business. How embarrassing would be if she asked for a roll call and they find out they don't have a quorum? Actually, that could really backfire when I think about it. But, you know, it is something kind of showing that the Imperial Senate is a rubber stamp body. She's talked about passing a, a, an act in the Senate, passing a law, rather than an Imperial dictate. Which is showing that she's still trying to operate under democracy, that she's pushing for laws and that it's probably one of the few senators who's actually trying to do stuff in the Senate rather than just... No, c- come in for a nice cozy check and a rich life on Coruscant while the Empire does whatever it's want. That's definitely what that one little scene where I could take away from my mom's ma. And then also we get a scene with Lucian too at the end where he's in his shop, you know, all that. And um, the um, the corporal from the first three episodes and we've seen him, you know, with his mother and last two. He's in the shop apparently reading a paper. I guess there's a sitting room there, I guess and mentions the attack on a diary. It's almost like he's fishing for information. I wonder if he suspects something. Who knows? Um, but Lucian goes in the back and laughs, you know, like laughs in relief, that kind of laugh from it, that the attack went on and apparently was in the papers. I mean, that's kind of interesting. Um, but also, something to note is, I saw a lot of people expecting that um, Vail was Lucian's daughter. I don't know. I was looking for that to see if there's any indication in here, but I didn't see any. But I could be missing something. I see what they're saying in the last episode, but I was looking in this episode. And besides Lucian's sense of relief, I see no additional evidence. But also, something interesting. The other lady, not about the other one, puts on an Imperial uniform and goes to um, basically where the, the Adari are watching the eye. And I was wondering, is she going to somehow start an Imperial Massacre. I'm serious. Like, why was she doing that? It's so... not. It's so unexplained. 
And I think it's supposed to be unexplained. So maybe that's actually just how she's going to get out of the Imperial base since she wasn't taking the 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 um, cargo transport. But it does make me wonder, like, was she going to try to get the Empire to do something even worse in response to this that would make the new thing and galvanize people against the Empire? I don't know because that was nothing like that was ever brought up. So maybe Arkham's Razor was just her disguise to get out. Which, you know what? It's a very likely possibility. Um, but we, but that's about all I have for this episode, my thoughts and opinions and reveal. Um, I do wonder, like, um, the uh, leader of the Adari tribes that come, um, or, I get, or Elder, I should say, um, he's speaking in the local language with Don, Lieutenant Don, he knew, but he did not, he did not translate it properly back to the, to the commander in one scene. And I think the elder picked up on that. But also it did make me wonder, how much did that elder maybe knew mo what was going on, knew more than everyone else. Like they knew that they were being a distraction for something going on. It does make me wonder. Um, but that's the end of my thoughts, but I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section down below, what did you think of this episode? Um, also, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, follow, upvote, you know, all that stuff, and feel free to check out in any of the links that are down below. And as always, have a good day, a good night, wherever you are. May the Force be with you, always.